Okay, ready to start? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Julien, and I'll be with you for... Um, sorry, I have an echo. Maybe this one. Yeah, um, my name is Julien, and I'll be with you for the next 20 minutes. We would like to take a short trip uh, in the beautiful world of uh, heavy-duty applications. Uh, so I was expecting a moderator for the introduction, so it has to be a self-introduction. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but in a nutshell, um, so I'm in charge of industrial applications uh, with the Green GT. I've been... Is it better now? Thank you very much. So, yeah, I've been in that role for the last five years. Uh, in charge of uh, sea and land applications. And prior to this, so my role was with uh, Toyota in uh, Europe and in Japan, in charge of uh, stack development and in charge of the uh, introduction of the Toyota Mirai, the first generation uh, in Europe. That was uh, the task force I was responsible for. Okay, so now let's jump to uh, today's discussion point. So, uh, one word about Green GT: um, we are a uh, an independent company uh, developing and being experts in um, high power hydrogen electric hybrid applications. This is our core expertise. Uh, we cover the entire hydrogen powertrain, uh, of course. And we have grown, we have developed this expertise uh, based on 14 years, almost 15 years of um, prototyping, integration, and uh, R&D in uh, different areas. Uh, of course, motorsport, you will see more about this later on. Uh, industrial applications, prototyping, and components. So what is a little bit special about us is that we are a small company, but we are fully independent. We have uh, the, a certain degree of freedom when we support our customers to partner, to collaborate with uh, whoever we think is uh, appropriate for the customer. So we have this uh, high degree of freedom in our uh, technical choices. So today, uh, the topic that was uh, requested uh, to, to cover is about high power applications, high power hydrogen applications. Um, that's a big challenge, an optimized integration uh, is needed and that uh, requires a very thorough understanding of the entire chain. This is what I would like to, to talk about today because this is exactly the foundation, the, the basis of the, the expertise of Green GT that has been piling in the, in the last decade. So today I, I have decided to not to make a lecture, but to pick up, to list up four different topics that are very relevant for high power applications. So I'll talk about integration of hydrogen storage. I'll talk about the challenge of um, architecture development. Uh, naturally, we'll talk about uh, thermal systems, thermal management for these high power applications. And uh, lastly, I would like to say a word about components and how hard that can be for small companies, even larger companies and prototype prototypists like us to get the proper access to the components you need. So I have to check time, make sure that I don't talk too much. So um, first topic um, regarding hydrogen storage. Sorry for stating the obvious again, but the uh, high power usually comes with a need for high energy because you need to go far, you have energy requirements, so your high power applications will usually come with a demand in terms of energy storage. That's not an easy part. 
uh, even if hydrogen has some convenience in that respect. So first question that will come for a heavy duty application is uh, what type of storage you need? Uh, what physical state? Liquid, gas, a bit of both, so cryo compressed, hydrogen carrier, there are many solutions. What is really matching your requirements, answering your demand? That's the key question. Um, most of you guys will go for gas, high pressure gas storage because it's readily available and, and accessible. Uh, you still need to make decisions about the type of tank and uh, the, 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 the right storage uh, pressure, the, the level of uh, pressure you need uh, for this. The, um, the third aspect to, to, to cover, to manage, of course, is the compliance with the standards. And here I want to take a short break because you see I'm mentioning choice of uh, tank type and dimensions. Will you have the choice? That's my question. We didn't have much choice four years ago when we um, first uh, started the prototype, the truck prototype that is outside there, this big prototype uh, heavy duty truck that we are making, we have made. Uh, there was no choice. Today there is more choice, but even for a bigger o big OEM with a large program, it's not always easy to find exactly a customized solution. You have to go to what is on the shelf, what is readily available, especially when it, you want to go through the homologation. So the supplier can prepare whatever you want, but uh, going through the homologation is, is, a, is, a, is an important requirement. Uh, last point here I want to cover. You see here on the, the prototype on the right hand side, it's, it's the one that, is, uh, that will uh, go on tour, uh, tomorrow, uh, this afternoon. This is a, a uh, 44 ton, 26 ton carrier. And uh, the challenge was of course the integration of the, uh, of the different tanks. This is the one that has been made uh, in Switzerland. This one is in France and is uh, exposed, exhibited here. That's, uh, that's the, the, uh, the important point. How do you integrate, how do you manage the piping, the homologation, and the center of gravity? Second point. Okay, so, okay, we're all on board. We have the energy, we have the energy. It's hydrogen, it's stored properly. Um, how do you turn it into power? Uh, to answer your cycle, heavy duty cycle, like the one we do for our customer, Carrefour. Um, this is very demanding, lots of variation, uh, differences in, in load. So this is really the hard point when you need to define your architecture. There is no simple solution that would fit all the applications. Um, you need to optimize your energy balance, your power balance, your efficiency. So if you, if you look at the right-hand side, you see that race car that we have developed at Green GT. Over there, it's exposed uh, just at the entrance if you pay attention. Um, this is a hybrid parallel. So you have four stacks, hybrid uh, series parallel. You, we also have developed um, parallel with mechanical hybridization. And the trucks you see over there is uh, battery uh, fuel cell uh, series parallel, but as well uh, the two the, the two stacks the two fuel cell systems are also in parallel. So, well, uh, you really need to make up your mind. Uh, how do you want to work with all these elements? How do you control their aging? How do you control their response time? And in the end, how do you control the overall architecture? Uh, in terms of command control, that's very, very important to keep it reasonable and manageable. So that was the second point to be mindful for when dealing with uh, high power applications and heavy duty. Um, then I will go to something that may sound very familiar to all of you. You may even wonder why, why do I mention this? Thermal uh, engineering is well known. You have lots of supplier, lots of simulation knowledge, and I still insist on having it here. Um, fuel cell systems, they have their efficiency that's not 100%, a uh, bit below what a, a battery could do. 
um, they will definitely release some heat. And this is different from what you may be doing with uh, thermal engines. So you have lots of devices on board that actually work with low temperature. And that's a problem, of course. A battery, um, a DC-DC, a, um, a fuel cell, of course, they usually work below 80 degrees or whatsoever. That's difficult to cool. And uh, of course, when you have heavy duty, high power, high electric power, you also have high uh, thermal energy, thermal power release. And you need to manage this. That is not easy, um, especially because all these elements, they tend to age battery, fuel cell, and after some time or mileage, the degradation is also degrading your efficiency and you release more heat and you're punished. So you need to manage this during all the lifetime of the vehicle. Um, in terms of components, one more complexity, you don't always find the right uh, fan, the right cooling system, the right um, uh, pumps and anything you may need for your thermal circuits. And last uh, element for complexity is that the coolants themselves, they're not always the same. Well, they're never the same. So whether you're talking about a coolant for a fuel cell, for a battery, for um, other electronic, high power electronics, you need to manage all this. So heavy duty, yes, uh, that's cool, that's, that works. That's also a heavy thermal release and a uh, severe headache if you don't pay attention. That's why I wanted this slide here. I just have a few minutes to conclude and add one more element that is very, very connected to what most of you guys will be doing today, is to find suppliers and partners. Uh, when we started this prototype outside four years ago, um, the supply chain for hydrogen components was heavily limited, really limited. It has improved since then. It's, it has improved. Uh, we're, we're not there yet. So the question is, once you have defined your perfect ideal, ultimate design, um, you also need to connect it to your supply. And uh, there, let's be honest, there is still a lot to be desired. For example, in terms of material, in terms of technology, product availability, lead time. We are all in a hurry. The market is now, we need to hurry up. What's the lead time? What's the cost? What is the availability? So if you're a large OEM, you may have some access to the supplier and have some leverage to get what you want. If you're a small or medium company, you represent less, it's more difficult. So we really need to consolidate this supply chain. And uh, I would like to finish with that element. Um, let's not forget about certification. Uh, the customer is going for homologation, requiring some sub-certifications. One really needs to pay attention in all the orders that are placed with the certification. Typically, R10, R100, machinery, whatever you need. Uh, this, is a, this is a real headache. That's why we are, we are showing these laser charts, because you never find the perfect solution. You have to make compromises and trade-offs. And that's uh, true for, of course, uh, light vehicles, but it's very true for heavy duty vehicles as well, because the volumes are a little bit uh, below still. So let's be mindful for this and, and pay attention when uh, doing this kind of project. So that's my, uh, my conclusion here. Um, of course, it's possible to go for it's possible to go for a high, um, high heavy duty and high power. It works. We have demonstrated it in a, on a race track with our race car here. You can come to visit us uh, over there uh, in the corner with some um, prototypes, components, and discuss with our experts. Uh, what is really important is to have the right partners in this forest of information and new things so that you can progress in your project, in your prototype uh, ambition, in the best uh, possible conditions. That's all for me today, and uh, I thank you for your attention.
I don't know if we have time for questions. I think it's 9.50. So maybe we can take one more minute. No? OK, no, that's a no. Sorry. So if you want to uh, discuss further, I'll be uh, at the Green GT area over there in the corner. Thank you very much. Diagramme araignée.